Yeah, this is a uh, this is a tough call, but um, I am um, announcing my retirement, and I'll be putting the Dockers purple and white jersey on for the last time this week. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one to run out in, in front of our home crowd um, at Optus Oval, but um, I'm looking forward to it and, and um, can't wait to get out there for the last two hours with with, um, with the brothers. What's the last uh, day or so, particularly this morning, been like talking to your teammates and running us through what it's been like for yourself? Yeah, I, um, I was OK going to bed last night. I woke up at um, four, uh, uh, five thirty this morning. Um, couldn't get back to sleep, and because um, had a few things on my mind and confronting the boys and and doing this today as well. So um, it was tough. Also had Daniel Pierce um, say his few words to the group as well, and um, yeah, heart rate was racing a bit. But, um, but I think I. Um, Said what I needed to say to the boys, and, um, and yeah. is it nerves about fronting people at an important time of your your career, or is it a sort of emotion at the significance of what's sort of happening? Uh, yeah, a bit of both. Um, you, know, you spend I spent half my life um, at Fremantle Footy Club, and um, you know, 14, 15 years representing the club, and um, you know, coming here as a young young man and and leaving as an old man so um, it's been a long long journey um, but yeah you, you know, my job is to play footy and now my now that job's um, at the end now so um, yeah so it was hard to say goodbye to the boys today but at least I've got um, you know, two two more hours tomorrow with the with the crew and um, you know, hopefully finish the season on a high um, with the win, so um, yeah, it was tough, but um, I'm sort of glad I'd done it now. Um, I'm I'm a person that that you know really laid back sort of person, so I would have been happy just to sit around and have a few beers with the boys and say thank you and and, and move on. But um, I guess it gave me opportunity to say uh, th um, thanks to a lot of people and you know, especially the the fitness staff and the physios and the doctors. Um, you know, the guys that do a lot of work behind the scenes. Because um, um, they're the ones that you know, work a lot of hours getting the, the AFL boys up and going week in, week out. So, um, yeah, it gave me the opportunity to say thanks to those guys. and um, But also, yeah, speak to, um, sp uh, speak to the playing group. Have you got it? Physically, how are, how are you, Michael? How's, how's your body holding up at the moment? Uh, yeah, good, good. No injuries over the last couple of years, which is good. Um, had a couple of setbacks in my back and my hamstring um, stuff a few years ago, but I you know, played every game last year in 2017. Um, and then this year, um, just unfortunate that you know we're, we're moving into a, um, a rebuilding phase and... Um, and you, you need to play our, our young backs uh, this year, especially when you know we don't get the results in the field. So, um, you know, I've you know I've been around the system for a long, long time, and I know how it all works. So, when the call was made, I was happy to move aside and, and allow these young backmen to you know, get some experience and work together because they they're going to spend a lot of years together down there. And um, but yeah, it's you know, I'm. And myself, I'm, I'm good. Like I'm, I knew it was coming. I've, I've spent a lot of years, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears at this footy club. So um, you know, I'm going to walk away a very proud man. And, and hopefully, you know, the players that I played with um, know what I'm all about and, and, and know that I gave it my all. So, um, but yeah. Ross talked yesterday about replacing an entire defence, basically, and you're almost the last last one to go. How is the club placed, do you think, going forward, particularly um, in the back half? Uh, really, really good, I think. <coughs> um, it's a real young back line. You, you get Joel Hambling, Alex Pearce playing a lot more footy together uh, you know, and, and playing on the, the, the opposition 
main targets. And then you got your Nathan Wilson having his first year here. Uh, Ethan Hughes is coming through the ranks um, and he's playing really good footy down down at Pill level. So he gets the opportunity this week. Uh, you got Luke Ryan, he's in his second year. So there's a lot of players. Ryan Nyhouse is um, a very promising um, backman and you know, he does a really good job um, against the real quality uh, forwards in the opposition team. So there is... Um, there is a lot of promise in that back line. Uh, you just got to get more games under their belts and um, and and experience a lot of ups and um, ups and ups and downs. So um, so hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll be sitting, you know, I'll be coming to the home games and watching the back line real closely and and um, and um, yeah, hopefully they can perform and um, play their role week in week out for the for Ross and um, the coaching staff. Any thought to what you will do? Uh, not at this point in time. I've, um, you know, I really want to enjoy you know, um, a bit of downtime with the family and kids and, and you know, do the dad stuff for a bit. Um, but when it comes to work-wise, I, you know, I'll, I'll just get this game out of the way and, and then sit down and sit down with the right people and, and, and then work out what I want to do. And um, but I'm. I'm sort of nervous, but then I'm also excited about the next chapter in my life. So, um, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll meet the right people at the right time. And um, but, firstly, I'll, I'll like to enjoy a few days with the boys, have a few beers, and you know, I love a beer. So, um, <laughs> uh, so I'll make sure that I um, enjoy those days, and hopefully, my wife lets me out as well. So. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, at the right time, I'll, you know, I'll sit down with my manager, Colin Young, and, and work out the next plan. And um, if it is footy, it's footy. If not, um, yeah. Will you be emotional tonight? Um, yeah, I, was, I thought I was, I was good um, before the, the talk before the boys today. Um, I think Daniel got me more more worked up than than I was planning to. Um, yeah, he was he was um, walking up and down the the hallway, um, stressing. So um, now, you know, I've, I've played footy for so many years. I've represented the club and so many hours on that footy field. I'm just going to enjoy it and um, embrace it, and um, and then you know, hopefully the supporters can and stay back after the game and and watch myself and Lee Spur. Um, go around with a lap of honour, and because you know this round is about our supporters and our members, so um, it's a good opportunity to you know, go out there, hopefully get the four points and a really good win, and then and then soak it up um, uh, post game. So um, no, I just it's another challenge, and you know, I can't wait to get out there and, and represent Fremantle for the last time. And, especially with the other 21 brothers that are going to put the jumper on and, and, and go out there and um, face Collingwood. Yeah, he's, um, he's a different character, Daniel. <laughs> he, but I love it. He, he's, he's straight to the point. So if, if, you're, if one of the boys are mucking around, around the club, he's, he's not scared to bloody let you know about it. Um, but Daniel's given us so much um, run off the halfback wing role, um, a lot of experience. His, his knowledge of the game is really strong, and um, yeah, he's come from a strong club at Port Adelaide. Um, and then yeah, coming over here to to give more, feet, you know, I guess more insight on how to play the game. And uh, I think the. The young guys like Darcy Tucker and, and players like that have played the wing role is, have, have learned a lot from Daniel. Um, but yeah, I'm going to miss him. He's, yeah, he's, his plan is to go back to South Australia and, and, um, and shift back there with his family. So um, I know myself and the other brother boys down at the club here will miss him. And, um, but yeah, again, um, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be catching up with him and, and, and reminiscing on uh, the good times that we had, and um, especially you know, the, the really good wins and the grand final loss we we had. So, um, but yeah, he's he's going to be missed and.
what is it that stands out for you over a pretty long career when you think back? What are the, the things that you'll probably remember for a long time talk up talk about when you catch up with, with the boys for a beer down the track? Um, yeah, you can't you can't shy away from you know the years that we you know, the you know the 20, 2013, the fourteen, the fifteen years when we were up and going and, and playing really good footy and playing prelims and grand final and and finals footy. Um, you know they were the fun times. You know we um, you know we we knew the way we. The way we train is the way we played back then, and um, we worked really hard off season, pre season, and in season. And and you can't um, shy away from you know those those really good years. Um, you know, it's always hard to talk about the the grand final loss, but um, to be part of that day, and especially being the first Fremantle team to to represent this club on that day, is yeah, always I always remember that, and um, you know we. Yeah, so you know, days like that, the the big wins we had, um, and even just the, the times we, you know, when we travelled away, or the the times we have around the footy club, it's you know, um, it is a serious place sometimes. Uh, but then there's a lot of joking around and, and enjoyment around the around the group. So um, yeah, it's going to be tough to to walk away from that and and not be part of that. But um, yeah, we all we all get old and we all got to move on. So. Um, yeah, so I'm going to miss that. Have you enjoyed guiding some of the young guys through and has that sort of opened up the possibility of potentially coaching maybe further down the line when the dust has settled? Um, yeah, maybe. Like I, I like to explore my options first before moving into coaching, but I, um, I see myself as a, a role model to, to the backmen um, at our club and also um, our Indigenous boys. So if it's, if it's coaching and doing some Indigenous stuff or, or Aboriginal um, stuff I'm, I'll be keen to do, um, but yeah, hopefully I've, I've left the um, left the mark on some of these um, these these backmen down at the club. So um, yeah, so I know when I went through the ranks when I first rocked up, and players like Shane Parker and Luke McFarlane, and um, I played a lot of footy with Anthony Grover. These guys are the guys that I looked up looked up to when I first got to the club, and um, and I learn a lot from those guys, and they're the ones that paved the way, paved the way for myself and other players uh, years ago. And, and hopefully, I've done the same for the current crop of uh, backmen. You look at a lot of the elite defenders these days, and they, they share some sort of characteristics in the way that that you play. <coughs> to become a, how hard has it to it been to become a modern defender, say knowing when to leave a man to intercept or affect a third party in a contest, how, how difficult has that been? And, you know, yeah, I mean, Maybe one of the forerunners at that. Uh, yeah, I remember 13, 14, you know, the, the years that we had some good success, it, yeah, it, just, it just happened. Because um, we, you know, we relied on a lot of pressure upfield uh, from our forwards and mids. And so, so that allowed me to roll off Luke McFarlane to roll off, Paul Duffel to roll off. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's the whole team support we, you get on game day um, that allows you to, to play the role that you get picked to play. Um, it is tough, uh, tough sometimes when, you know, yeah, especially the game against Geelong, um, you, know, it's, you, know, you chase an arse all day and it's, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, but um, when the team's up and going, um, everything just works and and comes together, and um, that's the good times. And um, yeah, you, you look at the current players at the moment. You know, your, um, your Jeremy McGovern just plays that role really, really well. And um, but then you look at the team defence of the West Coast Eagles allows him to play that role. So um, yeah, I think it's 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 a craft that all defenders need to, to need to work on. And um, I think uh, Luke um, Luke. Ryan is one of those players that play that role for our team really well um, these days. So yeah, it's just it's just something that you need to work on as a as a current defender, and because um, I know that that gets you games because that's what allowed me to play 244 games. <coughs> what, what's possible for this group next year? Do you think Michael? What would be the message you would leave them with? Uh, anything's possible. Um, 
know, the club is run by a really good leader, and that's Ross Lyon, and, and a really good captain, Nathan Fife. And I've had three captains over my career, and um, Peter Bell, Matthew Pavlich, and Nathan. Um, they all bring all different strengths, and, and you can see the way that Nathan um, works hard on game day. You know, he battles to the end, um, crashing packs, allows our forwards to get you know, a couple of one-on-one -on -one contests because he, win, he wins the hard ball, gets a forward, but his role and then his fall back to help defence. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's what you want as a leader. Um, so then, then you look at the leadership group, the, the players that are coming up and helping him week in, week out. Michael Walters is playing really good footy. Lockie Neal's playing really good footy. And then you've got your old heads like Dave and, um, and Aaron Sanderlands. Alex Pierce is going to be a great backline player. Um, so they're the players you need, sort of need to drive this club, and which we do. Um, and then you've got your young players that have played a lot of footy this year. Bailey Banfields, the Adam Chera. Um, Andy Brasher will be back next year, so they're the players you need to get footy and um, minutes in their legs, and which we've, we've had this year. And um, we know that um, it's all about what you do off season and, and pre season. So um, you know, if the boys go away, um, thinking, you know, firstly, like, you know, hopefully finish the year on a high, but then go into pre season uh, real fit, healthy and determined to bloody turn your season around. Anything's possible, so... And I know this group can do that, and it's led by our, our leaders, so... Um, I'll be watching closely, and hopefully um, the boys can turn it around next year. Thank you. Thank you.